Hello, my name is Fiona, and I'm a certified teacher and a Praxis coach with Steady.com. Are you preparing to take the Praxis Early Childhood Education Exam 5025? These questions are sample questions from the Health and Physical Education, Creative and Performing Arts category, and specifically cover the Health and Physical Education questions in this category. Let's review some of the types of questions you may encounter on the exam. Let's get started. Problem number one. When introducing first graders to the game of soccer, which of the following skills should the teacher focus on to help students understand the basic mechanics of passing the ball? So I want to look more closely at the question. We're talking about first graders and what should the teacher focus on to help students understand the basic mechanics of passing the ball. So let's look at the answers. Using the inside of the foot for better control, that's possible. That better control is a very basic skill. Kicking the ball as hard as possible to reach teammates. It doesn't seem like much of a skill and can be very counterproductive as it's likely to go out of bounds. So I can say we can rule this one out. Passing the ball with the toe for increased speed. Again, we're talking about basic mechanics of passing the ball, not increasing speed. So we can cross that out. Additionally, using the toe to kick the ball can actually cause injury to the toe or to the foot. So it's not a good idea in general. Using the outside of the foot for better aim. This is all good and well, but we're talking basic mechanics and basic skills. So this is not the correct answer either. Passing the ball in soccer to pass quickly and accurately requires a lot of practice and we are dealing with first graders here. Additionally, there are many ways to pass the ball. However, one top tip for beginners is this, the simplest way to accurately pass the ball directly to a teammate is the side foot pass. So A is indeed the correct answer. Problem number two, when teaching third graders how to roller skate, which of the following skills is most crucial for the teacher to emphasize for safety? So we are looking for a skill that is crucial for the student's safety. When learning to ski, learning to ice skate, learning to rollerblade, learning to roller skate. One of the first skills that needs to be taught is how to fall so that you do not injure yourself. It's a basic first lesson. So right away, let us answer that one. Learning to fall safely to prevent injuries is crucial. That said, let's look at all the other ones. Skating when, with hands in pockets for balance. Nothing about that is safe. Skating with hands in pockets. If you do fall, you will not be able to easily put your hands out to break your fall or to prevent injury to face or things like that. So skating with hands in pockets, even if you're an expert, isn't the wisest idea. It doesn't help balance anyway. So this is not the correct answer for sure. Racing with peers to improve speed has nothing to do with safety. So even if you know nothing about teaching roller skating, you can safely cross that one out as well. Locking elbows to improve balance. 
Using your arms to improve balance does work, but locking elbows is another safety concern. If you have locked elbows and fall down, you have a greater chance of injuring your wrists or your arms. So by process of elimination, and you can cross that one out. The only one that really works with skills that are crucial for safety is D, learning to fall safely to prevent injury. Problem number three, when teaching kindergartners about food groups, which of the following activities would be most effective in helping them understand the concept of a basic diet? So let's look at this closely. We're teaching kindergartners about food groups, and we want them to understand the concept of a balanced diet. So let's look at this. If we know nothing about teaching nutrition to young students, let's still try to solve this problem. Learning about the health benefits of eating carrots. There is nothing there about a balanced diet or food groups. We're talking about one single vegetable in one single group. So that cannot be the correct answer. Next, drawing a picture of their favorite foods. Again, we're not anywhere near food groups and the concept of a balanced diet. So that will not be the correct answer either. Creating a plate collage with pictures of foods from different food groups. Now, we've got the keywords food groups and foods from different food groups. So now we're talking more about balanced diet and food groups. So this is very possibly the correct answer. But let's look at the last one. Reading a picture book about a child cooking dinner with their parent. That actually is a very good activity, but it's not one that will help necessarily with the concept of teaching a balanced diet. So that will not be the correct answer. And indeed, C, creating a plate collage with pictures of foods from different food groups will be the best answer here. Problem number four, a fourth grade teacher is leading a lesson on the effects of pollution. Which of the following activities could best help students understand how air pollution can exacerbate asthma? All right, so we're talking about teaching fourth graders the effects of pollution and how air pollution can exacerbate asthma. So let's go through each of these and decide if they help with the teaching of the concept the teacher is trying to explain. A, demonstrating how plants can clean pollutants from the air using a terrarium. That does not show the effects of pollution nor how air pollution can exacerbate asthma. So that is not going to be our answer. Writing an essay about the chemical composition of polluted air. Fourth graders and chemical compositions, it might show the additional air pollutants in the air and the negative effects of that, but I don't think it will help them understand how air pollution can exacerbate asthma. So I think we can cross that one off as well. Showing a video of people in a polluted location wearing masks. 
if the students understand that these people live in a polluted location and they're required to wear masks in order to breathe safely, breathe clean air, then I think we're on to something here. And so let's put a circle around that. It's possibly our answer. Lastly, discussing the increased difficulty of breathing through a straw when engaging in physical activity. Physical activity does lead to asthma, but that's not the purpose here. The purpose is demonstrating the effects of pollution on the exacerbation of asthma. So I think we can safely cross that one out as well. So showing a video of people in a polluted location wearing masks, because that's the only way they can breathe safely, I think would be the most effective way to teach students how air pollution can exacerbate asthma. So C is the correct answer. I hope I was able to answer your questions so that you now have a better understanding of the topics you can expect to find on the test. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that with study.com's help, you will feel confident and prepared on exam day. Bye for now. Thank you.